You are locked on Cougars. Welcome into your Friday edition of the podcast. Hope you all are doing fantastic. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We got a lot to cover ahead on today's show. We're going to talk about Jeff Judkins. He calls it a career coaching week, as it turns out, is this week for BYU sports. What does it mean for the BYU women's basketball program moving forward? We'll get into that. Answer a couple of questions that came in late in the week as well in the listener mailbag portion of this podcast. And of course, get you ready for the weekend ahead for all the other BYU sports in action. Another Another busy weekend as we will break it all down for you guys on today's show. So without further ado, let's have some fun on a Friday. This is the Locked On Cougars podcast for April 15th, 2022. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, my friends? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. I work for the Zone Sports Network in Salt Lake City, Utah, as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. And we celebrated 20 years with those two knuckleheads on the Zone Sports Network this morning. If you're listening to this later in the day, if you have been listening to it in the morning between 6 and 10 a.m. Mountain Time, hey, as soon as you finish this show, thank you for making it the first listen of your day. Get over to the Zone Sports Network. We have a ton of great guests to celebrate 20 years with DJ and PK. Just a shameless plug for a show that I have spent the last eight plus years of my life working on daily. It's my day job. This podcast is a big part of my day, but my day job is that show. And it's crazy to think about. Uh, this is a show, by the way, and I know I'm not supposed to talk about DJ and PK as much as I am right now, but... The funny thing is I grew up listening to that show, waking up to it every morning in high school, and now I produce it. I produce it for the better part of eight, almost nine years now. It's just crazy to think about how time flies, but nonetheless, a lot of fun with that. Once again, by way of introduction, my name is Jay Catch. I work for the Zone Sports Network, as I mentioned. I love doing this show, though, talking BYU sports every single day. It's a big part of my day, as I said. I love talking about the Cougars. We are very proud here on Locked On Cougars to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where, of course, the modern is your team every day and as such we are your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars all right getting going on today's show in earnest I just want to say first off Jeff Judkins what a legend and I mean that in every sense of the word he announced his retirement from the BYU women's basketball program yesterday after 21 years with the Cougars what a legendary run it was for Juddy and I'll tell you one thing right off the top here about Juddy is he is the salt of the earth. He is one of the best human beings I have ever met in my entire life. He truly is just one of the people that makes this sports world as good as it is in many ways. There's a lot of people out there that are seedy characters that kind of do underhanded things. Jeff Judkins is anything but that. This is a guy who was a star at Highland High School, then went to the University of Utah for his playing days, was an all whack performer for three years for the Utes, then went on to play in the NBA, was drafted in the same draft as Larry Bird by the Boston Celtics. Uh, Larry, of course, was a first-round draft pick. Jeff Judkins, a second-round pick, had a career in the NBA, got into coaching, spent 10 years with Rick Majerus, the former University of Utah coach who led them to the national title game way back in 1998. And then in the early 2000s, he came to BYU. And I, 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 I got to be honest, when he took that job with BYU Women's Basketball Program, there were a lot of questions about, okay, is he doing this to bide his time to take over? Maybe if Steve Cleveland decides that the men's team at BYU is not for him and he decides to return home to Fresno, which ultimately he did down the road. But uh, Juddy got the position as the head coach of the BYU Women's Basketball Program, and it turned out to just be an absolute, incredibly perfect fit for him. He was a very very astute observer of the women's basketball game, a guy who was a legendary coach, just a great human being. Uh, can I insert one anecdote here? Uh, many of you know that my wife was a student athlete at Brigham Young University. Well, when we got married, uh, there were a few coaches that knew we were getting married. I happened to be living in Salt Lake at the time, and Jeff Judkins actually was in the uh, church leadership uh, at, of the stake I was attending at the time. And when I got married, he actually uh, sought me out at a meeting and said, hey, Jake, congratulations. I'm very happy for you. There are very few people out there, especially co high-level college coaches, who would do that. That is exactly what Jeff 
Judkins is, and he is just a, just an incredible human being. He drove every day from his house up there in the Mill Creek era area, excuse me, of Salt Lake City to Provo. Made that commute for twenty plus years, making the drive every single day. And you know what? This is a guy that BYU is going to miss, and I'm going to miss him. I know that many out there are going to miss him, and you're probably wondering why in the world are you spending so much time talking about women's basketball on today's show, Jake? Well, you know what? This week kind of turned into coaching week. We saw Mike Littlewood, the stunning news that he resigned his position abruptly with little to no fanfare from BYU. It's kind of the exact opposite for Jeff Judkins. The statements out there left and right about how great of a coach he was. Uh, the statement from Tom Homo said this, Jeff Judkins has had an illustrious career in basketball. From his high school days at Highland High School to starting at the University of Utah to his time in the NBA and then finishing it off with 21 years as head coach of the BYU women's basketball team, Juddy has accomplished so much. His record of wins, championships, great players he's mentored, and great teams he's led will long be remembered. Jeff loved his players, and they loved him. That final statement right there, Jeff loved his players, and his players loved him. That is about the best statement you can make about Jeff Judkins. He is a great human being, a great coach, and people who get to know him absolutely love him. So, Juddy, I don't know if you'll ever see this. I highly doubt you will because very few coaches, I think, are going to spend the time searching out a YouTube video or a podcast. But I just want to say a public thank you to Jeff Judkins. He was absolutely phenomenal for all the many years he spent at BYU. Let's list some of the accomplishments real quick about what he did. Uh, he's the winningest coach in BYU basketball history. You notice I didn't say women's basketball history in BYU basketball history. Yes, Stan Watts, Dave Rose, eat your heart outs. None of y'all can pass what Juddy Cert did. He had 456 career wins against just 204 losses. That is a 69.1% winning percentage. Almost 70% of the games he coached in, he won as the head coach of BYU over 21 years. Legendary performance. He led a BYU to 10 NCAA tournaments, reached the Sweet 16 twice. Obviously, this past year, a massive disappointment because I thought this team that Juddy had this year was maybe his most talented and deepest team he had put together in those 21 years. But unfortunately, that's how the thing goes. He also led his teams to five WNIT postseason appearances. He won five conference regular season championships as well as four postseason conference championships. Think about how few times the BYU men's basketball program has won a conference tournament. Juddy did it four times. Times. That's pretty incredible considering how rarely the men's team did it. He also coached eight conference players of the year, eight All Americans, 63 players who earned all conference honors. Oh, and by the way, 102 players who earned academic awards, not to mention athletes like Aaron Thorne, who went on to play in the WNBA. There is just so much that Juddy has accomplished in his career at BYU. And I, I don't know how to adequately uh, just put into words how much he has meant to the BYU women's basketball program, just the BYU athletic department as a whole. This is a guy who was as red as they come, speaking of the Utes, but he has been just an incredible ambassador of BYU and has just absolutely done things that I think will be hard. Anybody who replaces him, we'll talk about some of the potential replacements for him here in a moment, uh, but uh, anybody who's going to try and replace him, they'll be hard pressed to recreate the legendary run over 21 years that he had. Just consistent excellence up and down the board and that's the best part about a coach like Jeff Judkins is you you look at what he did the person that he was he never really changed and that's the best part that's the best mark I think you can say of anybody is that nothing changed them during their time and that's awesome the only thing I wish I would have been able to see from Jeff Judkins the head coach of BYU is to make like a final four run or something like that that is what I was sincerely hoping to see before he hung it up but all the same Juddy Thank you for a lot of good times. Thank you for the memories, and we wish you well in retirement. And I'm sure you will not be a stranger around the BYU basketball program, especially the women's programs. All right, coming up here in just a minute, I do want to talk about some of the potential replacements for Juddy. There's also a great question that kind of ties into all of this. It came in uh, talking more about the men's basketball program, but I think it absolutely applies to the BYU women's team and by the BYU athletic department as a whole. We'll get to all of that here momentarily. Let's take a minute, though, and talk about our friends over at Built Bar, one of our great sponsors today. You guys can see my Hawaii hat right above that Built Bar ad. But nonetheless, if you guys have not tried Try to build bar. What are you waiting for? 
They are the best tasting protein bars that I have ever had. I mean that 100% sincerely. I love these protein bars. They have the best tasting protein bar that I have ever had. Covered in 100% chocolate. They're soft and easy to chew. And then guess what? If you're not the biggest fan of the Built Bars, have you tried the Built Puffs? What they are is they are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar. They're absolutely a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. The more important part is the macros on both the Built Bars and the Built Puffs are absolutely incredible. 130 calories, just four grams of sugar, four grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein packed into them. Just go ahead and scroll down the macros chart on built.com and you will be absolutely blown away. They're incredible. High protein, low calorie, high fiber, low carb. Compare that to any type of candy bar or any other protein bar, and there's just no comparison between the two. Get to built.com, as I said right now. Place your order there. While you're there, use the promo code LOCKED15, that is L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and get 15% off your order. Once again, use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. And by the way, you're also supporting BYU football. We support our friends at Built Bar via their name, image, and likeness agreement with the BYU football programs. One more time, built.com, promo code LOCKED15, save 15% and get enjoying the best tasting protein bars with our friends at Built Bar. All right, time now to talk about some of the potential replacements for Juddy. I didn't mean for this podcast to go completely BYU women's basketball, but as I said, it's kind of in coaching week this week, and that's the crazy thing. Mike Littlewood steps down. You have news involving Jeff Judkins. It's just, it's been a crazy Crazy week on the coaching front for BYU. Chris Burgess, as we talked about yesterday, also uh, expected. It's not official yet. And that's the crazy thing about this is Chris Burgess's move to the University of Utah. It's not officially official yet, but it's expected to happen any time. And by the way, the time by the time this podcast comes out, it could be done. It just is a mere formality of getting the paperwork in order. But the biggest thing is who will replace Jeff Judkins in Provo? We talked some about some of the potential replacements for Chris Burgess. Did in there at the with the BYU men's basketball program. Well, just down the hall in the women's offices, you're gonna have to find a new person to head that job up. And the good news is BYU's got no shortage of candidates, both in-house and just up the road at UVU. I am of the opinion, and I said this on Twitter yesterday. You can follow me at Jacob C. Hatch, that I am of the opinion that BYU will absolutely look nationwide, as they mentioned in their release for the replacement for Jeff Judkins, but really. They don't have to go more than five, 10 miles at the very most to look at a deep and talented pool of candidates. Let's introduce you to some of them. Some of them may be ones that you know, others may not be. Let's start off with Ray Stewart. Ray Stewart has been a stalwart for Jeff Judkins for over 10 years now. He has been an assistant coach with the BYU women's basketball team since 2011, uh, a great member of the community. Stewart, that last name may sound familiar. His son, Trey, is actually on the BYU men's team. And Ray is a guy who I absolutely think will be on the short list to replace Jeff Judkins. As I said, he's paid his dues. He's been there for a long time. And the one thing about this, and I, I don't mean to make this all about a race or diversity or anything, that, but Ray is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and he also happens to be a black American. If you want diversity, well, here's an opportunity to do that in the BYU Athletic Department. Like I said, I, I'm not here to make it all about diversity. I am of the opinion that diversity for diversity's sake alone is not obviously the right way to go. But a guy like Ray Stewart, he's paid his dues. He's a well-respected coach. He has had a high-level athlete in his own family come through BYU and is at BYU right now. So I think the biggest thing for Ray Stewart is he can point to the fact that I have been here. I have been ingrained with this program. I know how it operates, and I can kind of do the status quo. We can keep the continuity going if I get this job. Another guy on that staff that's also in the mix for this is Lee Kamard. Lee is obviously a former BYU men's star, a great, great addition to the BYU athletic department as a whole, just a great human being. And Lee was the interim head coach when Jeff Judkins and some of the other staff members had COVID-19 when BYU played down there in Florida in November. He led BYU to two big wins in that tournament, that MTE as they call it down there in Florida. And Lee absolutely could be one of those guys like Ray who says, Hey, I know how things are working here. I've been here long enough. I know what uh, the success pattern is or what the, what the plan should be to have success in this program. Let me go out there and let me, let me be the guy. And Lee Kamard is young. He has absolutely got all kinds of energy. Any of you who've gotten to know Lee, he absolutely, 
absolutely will be on the short list as well. And then the funny enough, the other assistant on this staff, there are three assistants under Jeff Judkins. Melanie Pearson Day is absolutely going to be in the mix as well. Uh, Melanie uh, Pearson Day, I think she goes by Melanie Day now, but she has overcome cancer. She was uh, diagnosed with stage four breast cancer, if I recall correctly, given somewhere around five years to live, beat it against all odds, and has been a legendary figure inside the basketball program since 2019, since rejoining the BYU staff in 2019 after beating cancer. She absolutely will be a fantastic candidate in her own right. She's got a great playing career both at UCLA and at BYU. She played for the Bruins before transferring to BYU. She was a member of that. It was a 2002, yeah, 2002 Sweet 16 team with Aaron Thorne, etc. She's a high-level player who's accomplished a lot and obviously a very, very good coach. So the funny thing about this is with Jeff Judkins is his three assistants, all three of them have legit claims as to why they should be his successor. Now, let's also talk about some of his other assistants who just happen to be working up the road and some of his former players who are at UVU. Dan Nielsen is the head coach of the UVU women's basketball program, and before going over to UVU to be the head coach, he was the associate head coach uh, alongside Juddy at BYU. Dan would absolutely be a home run hire, I feel like, coming back to BYU. It wouldn't be a hard hire to make to bring him back across town to be BYU's head coach. He loves the program. He wanted to be a head coach, so he took the opportunity to go over to UVU and be the head coach there. Led them to an NCAA tournament berth last year. They played Stanford in the first round as a 16 seed, but making it to the NCAA tournament was a massive accomplishment for the Wolverines. Dan Nielsen absolutely should be in the mix for this. And now some of his assistants will also be in the mix because they're both former BYU players. Speaking of Ashley Garfield, a standout player in her own right, like Melanie Pearson Day for BYU. Uh, Garfield has been an assistant and a player for BYU, knows how the Cougars operate. She would be one of the players who could come and say, hey, I have lived this. I have been through this system. I have played here. I've dealt with so many different things. And she'd be a great hire, as would another assistant at UVU, and that is by the name of Kehlani Unga. My last name probably sounds familiar. Yes, it's Harvey Unga's wife. And Kehlani, four-year letter winner for BYU, all-conference player, all four years. Uh, took two years off to have her first two children. She is a legendary figure in her own right. I know I'm saying legendary a lot about all this, but I'm telling you, You've got six candidates within a five-mile radius of BYU's campus to potentially replace Jeff Judkins. Am I saying that any of these six are going to get the job? No, I'm not. I think that the favorites for the job should be in this group, in my in my personal opinion. But Kehlani Unga, she would obviously uh, bring home the Unga family to BYU. Harvey the, being the running backs coach in the BYU men's football program. And then Kehlani obviously could come in and be a part of the women's program once again. But the, the good news is there is no shortage of options for Tom Homo as he looks to replace Jeff Judkins. Now, I promised a question that was going to relate to all of this, and that comes by way of our good friend 49er Coog. It's Brian out there on Twitter, for those of you who know who he is. He's a great dude. He sent him this question yesterday asking about uh, Burgess, uh, speaking of Chris Burgess's departure, saying that obviously there is a coaching vacancy, but he says, is there a need to add more staffers like the BYU football team is looking to do beyond just filling an assistant's job? Now, that is a very interesting question that you bring up there, Brian. And I actually think the short answer is yes, there's probably opportunities here to go out there and hire more staff. Football programs are obviously going to have more analysts and GAs, all that type of stuff that they're going to go into having enough uh, people to help man a 123-man roster and make sure that it is uh, working at its peak capacity. But as BYU goes into the Big 12, it's all about having the best opportunities available to you now. With uh, BYU basketball, could they hire some analysts to help on both the men's and women's side of things? I'd absolutely be in favor of that. Get some people in here who can look at things a little more outside the box, some analytics, maybe focused folks, that type of stuff, where it helps BYU basketball be better. We all know what the men's team is going up against when they join the Big 12. The women's side of things is not any easier. Baylor just recently won a national title, has won multiple national titles. I know Kim Mulkey the head coach for the Bears, moved on to LSU. But Baylor is a very, very good women's basketball program, and the Big 12 is going to be a bear trap for the women's team. Get as many things that can be an advantage for you if you're BYU going into the Big 12 as you possibly can. Now is a good time. You can do this with the new hire of the women's team. You can do it with the hire of a new assistant or potentially assistants with the men's team and say, hey, we're also expanding the staff. We're going to bring in some analytics experts, some 
uh, analyst, for lack of a better term, and expand the staff overall. Maybe get some extra strength and conditioning coaches, some training staff, a nutritionist, all of that stuff. Expand the offerings inside these programs and give BYU the best opportunity to be the best they absolutely can be going into the Big 12. I am in favor of it. So 49er Coop, thank you for the question. I think you're dead on with it. I think there is a need to expand the overall depth and breadth of what BYU's athletic department has been operating with, even in the basketball programs. And I think it extends out to all of the college uh, programs at BYU, all the athletic department programs. If I'm softball, baseball, if I'm uh, men's and women's tennis, I'm asking for more resources, more manpower. I'm asking for everything I possibly can muster. Will it come to fruition right away? Absolutely not, because it's going to be, a, a, I think, a very uh, judicious process with regards to kind of doling out where these resources are going to be allocated to. But I do think that with the extra money that's anticipated to be coming into BYU's coffers, there absolutely should be a request from programs like the women's basketball program, the men's basketball program, and beyond that for more money to inject into these programs. Will they get the lion's share like football sh uh, can and should get? No, they won't. But I do think with added money being brought in by being a part of the Big 12, it absolutely should be part of the consideration for Tom Homo and his staff to consider, hey, you know what? Maybe we should upgrade a few things around here and give some of these coaching staffs and just the overall athletic department a little bit of a facelift and expand the manpower inside of it across the board. All right, so there you go. Candidates to replace Juddy, a big congratulations to Juddy on a job well done. He was a great, great coach, and I really, really enjoyed talking with him over the years, as I said. So now that we're done with the women's basketball portion of today's show, we'll round out today's Friday edition with a look at the weekend ahead in BYU sports, as well as a couple of notes about what happened earlier this week. BYU baseball opening their series yesterday against Nebraska. We'll get to all of that here in just a moment. Let's talk for a minute about our friends over at Bet Online. Yet again, they're another great sponsor of ours. Bet Online is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports information needs. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and uh, news, excuse me, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season now at betonline.net. They are your continued source for all of your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today. Once again, that's betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action available to you guys. Uh, by the way, we're going to be talking on Monday about futures for BYU, the FPI, the Football Percentages Index from ESPN. Well, if you want to put some bets down on the futures odds for BYU, BetOnline's got those for you guys as well right now. So BetOnline.net, it's the place to be. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, you can learn more about the trends and action available to you now. That's all courtesy of your friends at BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, as some of you may have noticed, I'm wearing a Hawaii hat today. Wanted to say congratulations to former BYU wide receiver Chris Jackson announcing on social media earlier this week that he is going to be a member of the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors moving forward. I wish him nothing but the best. Chris Jackson has legit top-end speed. The biggest thing was fitting in and working within the offense that BYU had for him. It just didn't work out, and unfortunately, the most Infamous play that he will have at BYU is that ill-fated decision to reverse field. I don't remember who was against, but it just I came to the top of my head as I think about Chris Jackson. And uh, he had some moments at BYU, but I hope he goes out there and kills it in the 808. The best part is I consider myself a little bit of a, a Hawaii fan. I don't know why. It just maybe the fact that I grew up watching Hawaii games at 10, 11, midnight, mountain time. Just loved watching the Rainbow Warriors. I still do it to this day. Late night, Saturday nights. There's nothing better than turning on a Hawaii football game. No matter who they're playing. They can be playing Little Sisters of the Poor, and I'm still all about it. So best of luck to Chris Jackson. I'm wishing him nothing but the best, and it will be fun to watch him playing for the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. Uh, by the way, one, two names, former Cougars, that I have been waiting to see if they will actually join the Hawaii program as well. Uh, one is Herkley Latu. He spent time at UCF. Uh, before leaving the Knights, he entered the transfer portal after leaving BYU. He's back home in Hawaii. I always thought if he wanted to continue his playing career, uh, the Rainbow Warriors would be a good spot for him, but I have not seen him actually announce if he's going to continue playing football. I know he's expecting a baby relatively soon, but nonetheless, I wondered about him. And then also, I have also wondered about a couple other players with BYU connections returning home to play for Hawaii. So it'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out. But Chris Jackson officially going to be a member of the Rainbow Warriors, and best of luck to him moving forward. Also, best of luck to Paisley Johnson-Harding. We talked a lot of BYU women's basketball today. She received a training camp invite to work out with the Seattle Storm of the WNBA. 
All you can ask for is an opportunity. She unfortunately did not drafted, did not get drafted, excuse me, in the recent WNBA draft. But Paisley Johnson Harding, she has got an attitude and a game to match it. I hope she goes up there and absolutely kills it with the Seattle Storm and gets her opportunity to go out there, maybe live her dream in for professional women's hoops. There are other opportunities overseas as well, so it wouldn't surprise me to see her uh, consider her options. The other factor for her, though, is her husband. Connor Harding, as many of you know, well, he currently plays for UVU men's basketball, and I don't know what his plans are going to be moving forward with Paisley done with her eligibility, but it'd be interesting to see how everything shakes out on that front. And then one final note for you guys on this front before we talk about the schedule ahead is Whitney Orton, BYU track and field and cross country star. She took home female collegiate athlete of the year honors at the state of sport awards presented by Utah's governor, uh, Spencer Cox last night, while BYU football signee Cody Hagan, who is embarked on a mission here relatively soon, he was named Boys High School Player of the Year. So congratulations to both of those current and future Cougars on those awards. All right, now moving on to our other Olympic sports as we need to get to as we look ahead to the weekend ahead. BYU Baseball opened a play in Nebraska, losing a heartbreaker 1-0. The Cornhuskers scored a run in the top of the, uh, the, excuse me, the bottom of the seventh inning. BYU unable to rally. They lose that one in a heartbreaking fashion, 1-0. There'll be a doubleheader today between the Cornhuskers and the Cougars. 1 p.m. and 4.30 p.m are the scheduled first pitches in both of those games. Both games will be on the BYU Sports Network radio-wise. If you want to listen to them, Greg Rubel doing a great job this year calling BYU baseball. And then the series finale will be an early morning affair, 10.05 a.m. Mountain Time tomorrow morning out there in Lincoln. If you happen to be living in the area, hey, why not get out there? BYU is now 17-13 and 13 on the season, obviously dealing with the Mike Littlewood departure abruptly earlier this week. So hopefully they can finish off the weekend with at least a series split, if not a series win, when all three of these games remaining. Uh, BYU softball is off this weekend. They had both of their games earlier this week canceled due to the weather, so they will be off this week and they'll return to play next week. Men's volleyball, their final two matches of the regular season are tonight and tomorrow night out at the Smith Fieldhouse. 7 o'clock start on both of them. Uh, BYU has not had the season they have wanted to have. They're 8-14, and 3-7 and seven in MPSF play. Be nice to see them go out and finish the season with a flourish with some wins on their home court. It's just been a rough, rough year for BYU men's volleyball. But 7 o'clock, BYU TV, both of those matches against the Bruins will be at the Smith Fieldhouse. Men's tennis lost 4-1 to Pepperdine yesterday. Uh, the Cougars will face LMU tomorrow at noon at the outdoor tennis courts. And some good news on the recruiting front for BYU men's tennis. They got top-ranked player in the mountain region to commit in Caden Hasler, and he's the son of BYU women's tennis coach Holly Parkinson Hasler. So congratulations to Caden Hasler on his commitment to BYU. Hopefully he comes in as a stud uh, tennis player for BYU. Uh, the women's team, by the way, they are in Los Angeles to take on LMU tomorrow. That'll be 11 a.m. Mountain Time for that. And then our final two notes here is the track and field teams that continue their competitions in both the Brian Clay Invitational, the Mount Sac Relays, and the Beach Invitational, all in Southern California this weekend. Best of luck to the track and field teams. And our final note, BYU Men's Golf, they had a fantastic showing at the Western Intercollegiate. It was the 75th anniversary of this tournament. It's one of the premier tournaments on the West Coast. BYU playing very well at Pasa Tiempo Golf Course. They shot a 7-under par final round to finish fifth at the intercollegiate their 54 hole total 54 hole total of 1097 finished in solo fifth place ahead of nationally ranked number 12 stanford number 30 arizona and number 38 oregon uh byu is number 54 in the rankings they're hoping to make the ncaa regionals this was a huge showing for their chances sitting on the bubble at number 54 uh, i know that they have aspirations of making the ncaa regional the good news is they're playing their best golf right now carson lundell had a fantastic showing he finished second at this tournament for the second straight year pasta tiempo is apparently where he likes to play he carded the best round of the tournament on wednesday with a bogey free 65 in the final round byu will now return home for their final regular season match of the year they're hosting it it's the Ping Cougar Classic next week at Riverside Country Club. Spectators are welcome to get out there to Riverside and watch BYU take on a number of other teams. Uh, they will be looking to win that for the 40th time in the 59th history of the event, but some good things for BYU men's golf. Hopefully they can make that regional. It was a big showing for them to go to the intercollegiate, Western Intercollegiate like they did and do what they did. It was really, really good to see. So there you go. You are up to speed on everything you need to know about the Cougars going into this weekend. As I mentioned a little earlier on, 
Monday's edition of the show. We're going to dig into the FPI, the football percentages index for BYU, what to make of them, what should BYU fans expect as we look forward to the upcoming football season. We'll have that all for you guys on Monday's edition of the show. And a huge thank you once again for making us your first listen of the day. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you go out there and subscribe, hit that enable notifications button. So the little bell down there. So that way you can uh, know when new episodes drop and also make sure to follow the show on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, search out locked on Cougars. You can follow me, Jacob C hatch. My DMS are open. Feel free to drop me a note anytime or email us. Locked on BYU at gmail.com is the email address. All right. Now, final note for you guys. Make sure you guys get out and listen to the Locked On NFL Draft podcast as your second listen of the day. Fantastic stuff on the draft. It's two weeks away. Two weeks from now, we'll be getting ready. We'll have already done the first round of the draft. We'll be a been in the books. The second and third rounds will be on tap. Well, that's when it starts to get interesting. We're like Tyler Algier for BYU. Make sure you listen to the Locked On NFL Draft podcast for daily coverage of all the events leading up to the draft in Las Vegas. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast, just like this one. All right, that's going to do it. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend. And of course, we'll reconvene here on Monday. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast for April 15th. Happy tax day, everybody. And we'll talk to you soon.